There are still places in the world where it's possible to observe steam locomotives doing the things they were actually designed to do. One such place is Java, particularly during the sugarcane harvest, when the whole country turns into a veritable Aladdin's cave for the steam railway enthusiast. The island of Java has a huge population. It seems that every square meter is cultivated in one way or another, and the vast sugarcane plantations serve the island's needs throughout the year. During August, the harvesting season is in full swing, and that's when the country comes alive with steam locomotives working the cane fields and around the mills. The mills themselves are fascinating places with a wealth of steam-driven machinery. A vast fleet of industrial locos work at over 40 mills on the island. Some see very little steam, but have a large collection of working items. One problem facing the enthusiast is that the vast majority of loaded trains to the mills run at night. To maximize the opportunities, you need an expert, and no one knows more about steam operations in Indonesia than Rob Dickinson. What did you find so fascinating about this steam operation up there? Well, ba basically, I've always enjoyed the narrow gauge. I think everybody enjoys the narrow gauge in Britain as, a, as a, something slightly different from the main line. But the, the real attraction was the fact that these locos were built 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago even, and they were still doing exactly the same work that they were built to do originally. Well, when you say narrow gauge, what do you mean by narrow gauge? Every, every, everything less than a metre. They've got 600 millimetre, 700 millimetre, 750, 900 millimetre, even amazingly 670 and 720 millimetre systems. It's unbelievable. So what's the main type of locomotive found out there? Well, most of the locomotives were built by Ornstein and Koppel in, in Berlin, and most of them are 080 tan tank or tank and tender locomotives. They look like ordinary locomotives, but in actual fact, they've got a special articulation system which allows them to go around corners. This is what's loosely called clean lintner or hollow axle systems. And from the outside, you wouldn't be able to see very much, but if, when they're dismantled, you can clearly see what, how they work. Again, They've got Owenstein and Koppel's patent Luttermuller system. These are o O10 O's from the outside. They look like 262s, but the end axles are geared. And so when all the wheels spin, you can, you can see this clearly. They are in actual fact coupled up inside. What more unusual logos do you have out there? Well, you had to pick one out of the whole of Java. You'd, you'd undoubtedly go for the, the loco at Regisari. It's a jack shaft loco. And those people who've ever seen a rack railway, it looks just like a rack engine. The only difference is it doesn't actually have a rack. So as the loco moves along, you can see this gear wheel whizzing round and the loco just proceeds along the tracks. It rides beautifully smoothly. Unfortunately, it must be absolute murder to overhaul. And so they never built another one quite like it. There's nothing else like it anywhere in the world. But most of the locomotives, as you say, are made in Germany, not Britain. Only one made in Britain. Famously, the, arguably, the last steam locomotive made in Britain in 1971 at Hunslet. And I've been out there with people who've actually seen this locomotive being built in Leeds and, of course, absolutely delighted to see it still working. And the good news is that it's 
the people who run it at Tranquil Sugar Factory, they appreciate its value, they've no intention of stopping using it, and it's in fabulous condition. You see it working every year. The good news about Java is that the demise of steam still seems a long time away. Unpredictability is the main problem here. One year, a particular mill will be alive with steam, only to find little or no activity the next. The reverse is also true. Mills that have been inactive with steam locomotives in store spring to life unexpectedly. The main reason for this is the availability of a suitable number of diesels at any particular time. The main attraction is to see industrial steam locos performing the same duties that they've been doing for many years. A very rare occurrence in these days. Well, that's all from making tracks for this week. In the next programme, we'll go back to Indonesia and visit Sumatra, where industrial working steam still operates on the oil palm plantations, though this is now very much on the decline. And to conclude our look at unusual and spectacular branch lines, we'll revisit South Africa for the McClear branch, which runs through 171 miles of the foothills of the Drakenberg Mountains. As usual, we'll be reporting about steam specials in the United Kingdom, and the programme will come from the Republic of Slovenia, which was part of former Yugoslavia. But until then, goodbye. Goodbye.